We have now pulled the PP03 out of the box and ready for setup. So parts list is the jump board, two little reserve clamps, and then of course the carriage. And if you have a half to piece, there are two poles and you have the clamps to screw on. Now I'll go over the parts list firstly for the PPO3 standard reformer. We have the extra safety clamps, which are used in conjunction with the clamps for the jump board. Coming over to the foot strap, foot and ankle strap, which goes onto the hooks here and here at the base of the reformer. Now we have the pulley risers with the four bolts and they are put at the end of the frame and I'll show you how to screw those in later. We have the ropes, we have the shoulder rest with the poles to screw it in. We have the pair of straps. Now put the shoulder rests and the pole onto the frame or carriage. Slide it in like so, into the slots and push forward. Wind the six inch handle onto it using your all your fingers and keep this tight. Don't let the wiggle factor play come into play with your Pilates machine. We are going to put the pulley risers on and just a reminder to put the washer towards the end of the round Allen bolt head. The pulley risers are screwed into position here where there's a nut insert and you simply tighten them up with an Allen key. Let's now attach the handles which we have put a dog clip to the very end of the rope which has got the loop and start threading the rope through the pulleys on the pulley riser on the top normally and bring it back and we're going to place it through the holes here into the cleats and tighten. Now, to loosen, put your finger like that, like that, and then you can pull like this to do your feet exercises, or you can pull it in, pull the rope in, for a shorter stance for your hand exercises. Notice it's got a beautiful taper there, so it will fall to the bottom. And again, remember to always tighten these to make sure it doesn't loosen. So, rope through the pulleys. We can always twist the pulleys, so it's, uh, don't get too concerned about which direction. We need to put the foot ankle strap on, and you'll notice that one hook goes over the eyelet holder here, and the other one goes over here, and you can position the hooks inside these little um, sleeves at the end of the strap to have the position you require. So if you're using a sitting box, you can put your legs under here, to uh, get that leverage you want. Right, on how to put the jump board in. Line the round poles up with the holes, sliding it down, making sure the knobs here are unwound enough, and then tighten. The unique adjustment system of the Pioneer Pilates foot bar is excellent. Very easy. While sitting on the carriage, just put your hands down to the locking knobs, have one hand on the bar and squeeze them in and then bring it down to the position that you require. Function with the sliding spring bar gear system, you're advised to adjust the carriage stoppers in tandem. So as you go forward, you will bring the carriage stopper forward also to cater for the carriage stoppers here to meet 
carry stopper here. The spring bar gear system, again, squeeze the knobs and adjust it along the track. Normally, for short people at the front and for long people at the back. The small standing platform that can be put at the end of the frame and turned around to add more length over the springs. Onto the half to piece setup, we have the four longer springs, four shorter springs, the roll bar or monkey bar, and also the push through bar which comes with the pins and also this locking safety strap, which goes over the top of the frame, which I'll show you later. Half to piece means that you'll have to insert the pole holder block with the four screws, which are already to be found in the frame, either side. We'll demonstrate how to put the poles in like so. In like that. Then it falls onto a little locking bolt there that sits nicely on the top. Once we have inserted the poles in, we now put the top U-bar in and slide it on. You then tighten the bolts in on the side, like so. We are now going to demonstrate on how to put the push-through bar probably in at the middle level until you find your right height. Don't forget this push through bar can go on either the outside or you put it on the inside and you put the springs on the side that you wish. Be aware that don't tighten these side locking screws until you have this in position. Then you can tighten this now tighten into the locking screws, knowing that there's a pin here which will keep it in a static position. Insert the springs on the push-through bar. And the shorter springs normally go onto the upper hook here, to the outside hook. There's no exact science on doing this because there may be different spring resistances needed for different exercises. But this is a starting point where most people decide to do it. So then we put two of the longer springs. And I think that we'll use the yellow ones to go on to the lower hook that go down to the hook at the base of the frame. We're going to insert the roll bar, or I call them monkey bars, with the shorter springs that will go on the inner hooks on the half to piece frame. And simply use the dog clips and put them on the top for maintenance. Always make sure these are nice and firm, not too tight, but just firm. Now, now we're going to insert the push-through bar safety strap. So in the middle of the upper half-piece frame, we put a dog clip around the black strap. And then we put the black strap around the frame, leaving the flat surface on here. And we'll bring this up here and put the dog clip into an appropriate position on either of these hooks, or in fact, maybe up to the top hook here again, depending on what height you have it or exercise you want to achieve. Now putting the D handle hooks in place, and these can go on any of these hooks all the way up the side frame, depending on what sort of arm exercise or shoulder exercise you're trying to do. So again, these are different from the normal handles. These are called D handles. 